In this lesson, we'll prepare our scene for animation. The scene is clear face rig in your project files. The first thing we'll do is load in our audio and test to make sure everything is playing back fine. Let's head over to File, Import, Go into the options, I'll reset the settings. Let's go ahead and find our audio file, choose import. We want to find the DT Facial Lanham Audio in the sound folder of your project. Maya supports WAV and AIFF files, we want to make sure we're using one or the other. So go ahead and choose our WAV file and import that in. Alright, from there we can go ahead and I just wanted to test out the audio by just scrubbing. I just wanted to Great. Everything seems to be playing back just fine. So from there, let's say we head over to frame one. It's going to be our start time and our end time. It's going to be frame 130. Let's again play back the audio. I just wanted to say... Never mind. So that's what we're going to be working with. And with this, we'll say... be able to get some really good expressions. Never mind. So this is going to be really fun stuff. I just now once this is loaded in, let's say we set our default in and out tangent types. I like to block things in, that way we are not distracted by the interpolation. We could just focus on our golden poses and then from there we can start to polish things after we're done roughing in our performance. So under animation, we'll switch our default in tangent type to linear and our out to stepped. Choose save. Great. Now at this point, we could also make sure auto key is turned on so we can quickly go in and set keyframes. And I'll also head over to frame negative 10. And we're doing this for a few reasons. One, so we can add any shapes we may need to to get a more solid performance. And this is very common in production. You may find that you have a very robust control rig, but there's just a few shapes that will need to be added just to make sure that your performance is going to be believable. So with that said, we'll spend just a few lessons just adding a few little shapes to make sure that we have top quality work. So on frame 10, or negative 10 that is, I'll go to the top character set, CS, clear head 01, and I'll press the S key so we can store keys on all of our controls. So again, if we ever need to make any corrections or additions to our control rig, we'd simply head over to frame negative 10. This also helps for motion blur too. So we have something that is, is smooth at the beginning of the animation. Usually you may find that this key that we've set on negative 10 is on frame 0, but if we start on frame 1, that quick change going from this default pose to whatever extreme is on frame 1, might cause your motion blur to be a bit extreme. All right, so now that we have that key on frame negative 10, I'll head over back to frame one as our start time. What we'll do from here is go ahead and set up locators, and these are for our eye targets. I find that this is very helpful. Without them, you can be animating the eyes, but not really have any direction on where they should target. So just for clarity, to make this easier on us, we can simply set up our own targets as reference points. So under Create, we'll create a locator. And let's go ahead and bring this up about the eye level. doesn't need to be perfect at all. Okay, from there, I'll head over to the channel box and increase the scale so it's easier to see and select this. Okay, now at this point, I'll duplicate this two more times. One for her right, and the other for her left. Now we can go ahead and just rename these. So this one selected, you can always rename this LOC TRGT for locator target underscore eyes C01. Copy the name, head over to the next one, that's going to be B. And A. Great. All right, well, our scene is set up and ready for animation. So the next step is to take a look at the reference 
that will, again, guide us to create a believable facial animation.